So here's your anatomy test. We're going to elevate a bone now. Which muscles are involved in this active elevation? So, okay, I took that test. Okay, I know it's the deltoid. I, got, I remember that term. Now, on the previous slide, I don't know if you noticed, those teeth were separated. And when the arm elevated, so did the mandible. So the deltoid and the temporalis muscles are contracting in that still image. But we keep looking at these teeth in, in occlusion. They're occluding. We look at that as a version of normal. We've been trained to look and think that way. We stipulate occlusion. Every time you look at an image, you won't find it any other way. These teeth will be in occlusion. They're occluding. I had to digitally alter this image to get the arm elevated. Usually, if you do a search for a skeleton at rest, they look like this. They don't have arms extended when you look at a skeleton. But when you look at a skull, the mandible is somehow always elevated. Now, on this mostly dead guy, he's got an active temporalis because that's how those teeth are touching. <laughs> I had to digitally alter this picture to put some blue in here to show what normal rest of the mandible would look like. But that looks weird to dentistry. I say, oh. How does that mandible stay there? Why, why you, you need to do that? There we go. Those teeth are in a nice occlusion now. No, they're occluding. There's an activity happening right now, but we don't see it that way. We've stipulated the occluding of the teeth. We call it occlusion. Here's an image of uh, the pterygoid muscles. Here's the lateral pterygoid, superior head, inferior head, and the medial pterygoid. Did the author um, ask the illustrator to draw a contracting medial pterygoid? Because that's what he got. Those teeth are occluding. We're going to learn later that lateral pterygoid, when it contracts, depresses the mandible. It will disclude teeth if they're occluding. This picture shows occluding teeth, so that medial pterygoid is contracting right now. So is the superior head of the lateral pterygoid. That contracts during elevation also. But we don't, it doesn't look that way to anybody. If you saw that, you'd say, oh, are you showing a deltoid contraction with the arm elevated? But we don't think that when we see teeth in occlusion, but it's always happening. It has to. We like to think of occlusion as a three-legged stool for stability. And we, t and we have this example, and this is starting to show how an articulator works. You can see how the incisal guide pin, how it would be tracing, and the stability of the stool. You would never have one leg shorter than the other. You wouldn't have stability. A stool is a bad analogy of occluding unless you change the way the stool looks. There's your three-legged stool. If it's stable and it's occluding, it really is on the ceiling. Mandibles have to be elevated before you can get the stability of the back mandible against the maxilla. Well, how does that thing stay up there? That's going to fall. Well, you got to hold it up there. You know, maybe, maybe wrap elastics around your models or maybe uh, somehow have something to keep that thing up there. Well, if teeth are in occlusion, it's because the muscles are constantly contracting and holding the mandible up so the teeth are occluding. There's your stability. All you got to do is just relax the muscles or you have to worry about stability anymore. It's this articulator that's completely distorted how we think about occlusion and occluding. Because when you look at that guy, he will clench all day long. There's nothing. He'll just keep going. So everybody must be clenching all day long because that's how we treat them. We've got to mount them and occlude them. Now we start to evaluate. 